It is good to see you in God's house today, and we'd like to welcome you to this service of worship at First Methodist. As you know, that uh, the Phase 2 guidelines have been extended and remain in place by our governor, and so we are closing off some of our pews, as well as providing some things for you to, um, to make it as safe as we can for you. We'd like to encourage you to wear masks, and we have hand sanitizer at the door. At this time, we are planning on serving Holy Communion next Sunday, which is our typical um, first Sunday of the month to serve communion. We will probably do it a little bit different um, to minimize the risk. There is no such thing as zero risk, but I will take every precaution that I can to protect you. I'll probably be serving communion with gloves on. I probably will wear my mask when you come forward to be served. And um, so we may have a couple of other things that we can put in place to protect you as much as possible. But we do want you to know that um, we are planning on serving it, making it available to you. If you'd like to receive, if not, that's fine too, whatever you think is best for you. Of course, we also want to wish you a happy um, 4th of July, which will be on Saturday this year. So the church office will be closed on Monday, July 6th since the holiday falls on a weekend. So just be aware of the, the schedule change for the church office due to the holiday week. So, um, so those are the couple of things that I have for you. Are there other announcements that we need to mention this morning? Okay, good. All right, I invite you to um, hear this call to worship, which comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 89. <coughs> I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. They exult in your name all day long and extol your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength. By your favor, our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. Would you pray with me? O Lord, it is good to be in your house this morning to gather together with friends and family, but most of all, to worship you. And so, Lord, as we gather for worship this morning, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would enter this place, that he would move among us, and that you would give us the ears to hear your words and the heart to respond. Lord, we are so grateful for your Son, Jesus Christ, who is with us even today, leading us and guiding us. And so, Lord, we ask your blessings and we invite your presence into this worship service this morning. And it is all these things we ask in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. And now, would you please join with me as we affirm our faith together using the Apostles' Creed. Many of you know it by heart. If not, you'll find it on number 881 in your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Usually we would pass the offering plate. Um, at this time, we are not able to do that. We don't want to pass something else along with the offering plate. So the offering plate has been placed on a table near the exit. And so we would invite you, if you'd like to make a gift, to drop it in the offering plate on your way out. <laughs>
things that you don't appreciate till it's gone that you don't miss I don't miss singing those old hymns until I can't do it anymore so thank you for for sharing with us as we um, come to a time of prayer in our service I want to um, mention a few things to you Tammy Hyde had um, surgery this week um, it did not go as well as we hoped she was in the hospital for several days she is home Right now, she will have to have some more surgery done at a later point, so uh, please continue to pray for Tammy and her family. Also, we want to um, continue to pray for our leaders as so many difficult decisions to be made. Um, Jolene Long at Cooley told me that um, they'll have a school board meeting tomorrow night, so we want to pray for, um, for those decisions that are made about schools as well as so many decisions to be made um, as the number of virus cases continues to increase in our community, in our state, and in our nation. And so we want to pray for those leaders also. Of course, we want to continue to pray for the uh, racial tensions in our country and that peace would be, uh, would be made there. And that hopefully it will begin with us, as the hymn says. And so we have lots of things on our minds this morning. Those are a few of the things on my heart as we come to a time of prayer. What others would you mention that are in need of our prayers this morning? Misty Price. Or Misty Price. Brain will have a procedure on uh, July 8th. Okay. Your friend will Jill. Boyd. Jill Boyd. <coughs> Others this morning. Okay. It is a holiday weekend that is coming, and I'm always mindful as we celebrate our freedoms of those who um, made them available for us through their sacrifice, through those who have served our country both in the past and in the future is and the present so we want to um, say thank you to those folks for the freedoms that we enjoy and uh, we'll talk some about freedom today out of romans chapter six and so i think it's kind of appropriate for us to begin thinking about some of that as we approach july 4th okay any other prayer requests this morning all right, with those things on our hearts and minds, let us pray together. Oh Lord, it is indeed good to gather in your house, to be able to mention the things that concern us, to be able to pray for them, to be able to freely gather in this place to worship you and to praise your name. Lord, we are so grateful. We pray that you would help us not to take those things for granted, but Lord, to give you thanks for the freedoms and for the privileges that we enjoy each and every day. Lord, as we think about Romans chapter six, we, Romans is clear that we all gotta serve somebody. 
And so, Lord, we pray that you would help us to, to serve and follow you, to set aside the old life, the life of sin, and, Lord, to follow Jesus each and every day so that others might see him in us through the things that we do and say. And, Lord, as we gather this morning, we are mindful of the needs that are all around us. We pray for these that we have mentioned who are sick, uh, maybe recovering from surgery, maybe facing surgery, maybe um, facing the virus, or, or we don't know their situations, but Lord, we know that you do. And so we pray your healing touch to be upon those that are ill, that they would know your presence with them. Lord, for others who have lost a loved one to death, we ask that you would surround them with your peace that passes understanding and your comfort. Lord, for um, leadership in our in our local area, as our community, our state, our nation, Lord, we pray for, for them so many difficult decisions to make and so many unknowns that we face. So we ask that you would lead them and guide them. And Lord, as we gather in your house this morning, we have other worries and concerns on our hearts and minds. Maybe it's about work or the economy. Maybe it's about school. Maybe it's about friends or family. But Lord, we know that whatever it is, that you are there with us leading us and guiding us, showing us your grace, your mercy, and your love. And Lord, we are so grateful, most of all, for your son, Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, the last few weeks we have been looking at the book of Romans, and we will continue to look at Romans throughout the summer. Today we come to Romans chapter 6, verses 12 through 23. And the title of the message this morning is Gotta Serve Somebody. Gotta Serve Somebody. From Romans 6, 12 through 23. So I invite you to hear the word of the Lord this morning. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal lives to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. And present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. And that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity, and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did, did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. If you are a Bob Dylan fan, you probably recognize the message title this morning. It is from a song on his 1979 album, Slow Train Coming titled, Gotta Serve Somebody. The song was recorded at Muscle Shoals Sound Studios in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. It won the Grammy Award for Best Rock Vocal Performance by a Male in 1980. And it stands as Dylan's last hit single, 
peaking at number 24 on the Billboard magazine Hot 100 singles chart. Now, I have to tell you the truth, I'm not much of a Bob Dylan fan. It seems like I catch every other word that he sings. But the lyrics of this song, Gotta Serve Somebody, sounded like they might have been inspired by this passage in Romans. Now, one of the things I do admire about Dylan is the longevity of his career. In fact, over the pandemic, he released a new album that you can listen to on Spotify or any other streaming service. And if you are really have a lot of time, he wrote a 16 minute song about the murder of John F. Kennedy. So if you have a lot of time or are on the road somewhere, you might want to pull that up and listen to it. Dylan, who was born a Jew, converted to Christianity and has dabbled in several different religions, has many biblical themes in his songs. The first verse and chorus of Gotta Serve Somebody goes this way. You may be an ambassador to England or France. You may like to gamble. You might like to dance. You may be the heavyweight champion of the world. You might be a socialite with a long string of pearls. But you're going to have to serve somebody. Yes, indeed, you're going to have to serve somebody. Well, it may be the devil or it may be the Lord but you're going to have to serve somebody. The song, which is about five to six minutes, goes on for several more verses to show that no matter who we are, if we're great or if we're small, eventually we all got to serve somebody. Paul, like Bob Dylan, writes in Romans chapter six that we all got to serve somebody. But the good news for us is that because of what Christ has done for us, we have the freedom to choose who we will serve. That no longer do we have to serve sin and self, that we can choose to serve and follow God if we want to. Now, you might have noticed in Romans chapter 6, Paul uses a number of times the image of slavery. Paul lived in a world where slavery was practiced on a widespread basis. I know that is a controversial word for today's world in a world that is full of racial tensions where statues are being taken down because they remind us of those days. And certainly those were not our proudest days as a country. But in the Roman world, slaves were common. And you could become a slave in a number of different ways that if your country was conquered by the Romans, you were probably going to be a slave and sold to the highest bidder. If you had a large amount of debt, you could also sell yourself into slavery in order to pay off your debt. And of course, Paul himself knew a little bit about being bound because he had been enslaved and imprisoned in the because of his faith on several different occasions. Now you and I will probably never be placed in chains and be sold at an auction like the slaves were. So we don't really know this idea of slavery, but the idea is that you are owned, that you no longer have free will, that you belong to that person. You see, freedom is the defining idea of our American culture. If you go to Walmart today, despite what the governor says, some people will not be wearing masks. They have the freedom to choose. Of course, we also have the freedom to go somewhere else if we feel like it is an unsafe situation. We are free to say and to do what we like within the law. We are even free to peaceably assemble as we have sometimes seen over the last few weeks. But the thing about freedom is there are always consequences to the choices that we make. Yes, we are free to choose, but the consequences come with it. If I chose to call someone a name, then maybe I would lose their respect and their friendship. Or maybe they would sue me for libel. We always have freedom to choose for good or for bad. Hopefully we make mostly good choices. But Paul writes in Romans 6 that sometimes we are tempted to make bad choices. And it has to do with our sinful nature. 
In fact, Paul says in verses 20 and 23 that once we were slaves to sin and we were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So Paul says, who are we going to serve like Bob Dylan sings? Are we going to serve sin and self or are we going to serve God and Jesus Christ? So what does this passage have to say to us today? The first thing I want you to see is that we are all sinners. Even the very best of us are sinners. W.E. Sangster lived from 1900 to 1959. And he was a British Methodist preacher who spoke to thousands every Sunday morning. He is generally regarded as, regarded as one of the 10 greatest preachers of the 20th century. But he knew he was a sinner. In a painfully honest look at his own life, Sangster wrote in his journal that he had many shortcomings in his spiritual life. He confessed that he was sometimes irritable and easily put out. He was impatient with his wife and children. He acknowledged that most of his study had been ambitious, that he wanted degrees more than knowledge and praise rather than equipment for service. Even in his preaching, he feared that he was more often thinking about what the people thought of him than what they thought about Christ and his word. He said he had long felt in a vague way that something was hindering the effectiveness of his ministry. And he concluded that that something was his inability to truly live the Christian life. It troubled him that the girl who had lived as a maid in his house for more than three years had not become a Christian because of his witness. He said he found envy in his heart at the greater success of other ministers. He felt jealous when they attracted more people than he did. So here is this great Christian leader, this great Christian pastor, this great Christian speaker, but he knew deep in his heart that he was still a sinner, that he was not everything that Christ meant for him to be. He made bad choices just like you and I make them each and every day. He needed God's help daily, just as you and I need God's help every single day. I'll have to tell you the truth. I don't really like talking about sin very much. That many of us remember a time when we were guilted into going into the church or following Jesus because we were afraid that we might end up in the wrong place. That legalism was rampant and sometimes the church and the followers of Christ acted much different than Jesus would have. None of us wants to go back to that. I don't want you to, to feel guilty. I don't want you to, to feel shame. But at the same time, we need to face our sin in order that we can deal with it. We see many lives today destroyed by reckless behavior. And no one, even the church, sometimes seems to care. It's hard for us to say, are you really, is that really what you want to do? Or what are the consequences of that going to be? So what are we to do? In Romans chapter six, verses 12 and 13, this is what Paul writes. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. So Paul says we need to set aside that old way, that old way of following sin and self and to embrace following God. I love the way that he talks about being brought from death to life. That sounds a lot like we talked about last week with baptism. But we don't really like to die to sin. We would like to, to maybe, maybe feed it every once in a while and just to enjoy life. I heard of a classic cartoon in Leadership Magazine, and there are two couples 
sitting in a living room engaged in a study about setting aside sin and dying to sin. One of the women says, well, I, I haven't actually died to sin, but I did feel kind of faint one time. And that's where many of us are today, that we don't really want to die to sin. We really want to just be a little bit faint. But Paul, for Paul, sin is serious. Sin is bondage. Sin is trapping us. That sin owns us, that we are slaves to it. There is no mythical moral neutrality. That we are always broken, out of bounds, fractured from the very first moment that we come into this world. We are all sinners, even the very best of us. But the good news is that secondly, we have the freedom to choose who we will serve. We have the freedom to choose who we will serve. I heard a story about John who was a typical American teenager. and John had just graduated from high school. John was planning to go to college in the fall, and so his parents decided that it was time for John to grow up, that he had to get ready to live independently on his own at college, that they would not be there to fix his meals and to get him up and go to class and to wash his clothes and all of those kinds of things. So they decided that it was time to end all of John's curfews. They weren't going to be with him, and so they decided that that John better get used to living in a new way and that they needed to get used to it also. From now on, John could stay out as late as he wanted as long as he got to work at 8 a.m. Well, John was thrilled. Freedom at last. He could stay out with his friends without having to make curfew. And on the first night of his newfound freedom, John stayed out way past his 11 p.m. curfew to 1 a.m. The parents decided to wait up for him. And so as they, they waited and as they worried, they watched the clock tick. Finally, John came in. They simply stared at one another, but no words were spoken either that night or at breakfast as John rushed off to be at his job at 8 a.m. Well, John's parents thought, well, maybe the next night will be better, but they were mistaken that, that 1 a.m. became 3 a.m. and his Parents still kept their vigil waiting for John to come home. Finally, at 4 a.m., the door rattled. The lock opened and in walked John. They stared, but no words were exchanged either that night or at the breakfast table. The third night, they had hoped that John had had enough of his newfound freedom, but he didn't. 4 a.m. became 6 a.m. The sun was beginning to come up over the horizon as John trickled in. What a night it must have been. John's eyes were red. He looked exhausted. He was so tired he could hardly stand, but all he had time to do was to take a shower and then rush off to work at 8 a.m. Again, any comment about John's late hours went unspoken. But the fourth night came, and this night things were different. When John got home from work, he was so tired that he showered, ate, and immediately went to bed. So did his parents, thankfully. And so for the rest of the summer, John was home every work night at 11, 11 p.m. And even on the weekends when he stayed out a little bit later, he would always call his parents to let them know about what time he would be home. You see, John had learned an important lesson about freedom. He learned that there is no such thing as absolute freedom, that there are always consequences to choices. There are always limits. There are always responsibilities. Paul makes a similar point in Romans chapter six. He says that there is no such thing as unfettered freedom. We are all owned by someone or something. We all obey someone. Paul says that we serve either sin or we serve God and his righteousness. We are owned either by God or by our sinful nature. But the good news for us is that Paul says we have freedom to choose. We have the power to choose that we can choose to be slaves of sin or slaves of righteousness. How can this be? 
Well, one master must drive out the other. That the more we follow God, the easier it becomes for us to follow God. The more we follow sin, the, the more the easier it becomes for us to go in that direction and harder it becomes more difficult to follow God. You see, but Jesus made it possible for us through his death on the cross that he offers freedom to us. Our slavery to original sin is broken. That God forgives us and breaks the hold of fear and sin and death on our life. But when we really, truly fall in love with Jesus, when we really, truly serve him, we, found, we find that being owned by God actually means freedom. We find ourselves serving righteousness. We find ourselves wanting to do what is right and just and moral, not just because we have to, but because we want to. It is those daily choices that help us to keep in God's will for healthfulness and wholeness. It means choosing daily those things that will bring God's glory and life into our lives. Olympic swim coach Daniel Chambliss put it like this. Great accomplishments, we often assume, require heroic motivation, an intense desire to be the best, and inner strength beyond all, measure, beyond all measure, some special love of school, of family, of country. Some of these must, we think, drive the superlative athlete. But in fact, he says, world-class athletes get to the top level by making a thousand little decisions every morning and night. If you make the right choice on each of these, to decide to get up and go to practice, to decide to work hard today, to decide to eat right, to decide to volunteer, to help your team, then others will say you have dedication. But it is the doing of those little things all taken together that makes that dedication work. Great athletes aren't made in the long run, they are made every single day. You see, life consists of making choices. The Bible says that we are drawn to bad choices because of, because of our sinful nature. But we have the freedom through what Christ has done for us to choose good things, to choose to follow God. You see, the Christian faith has stood the test of time because over time, those who follow Jesus have made those good choices. When people give their lives to Christ, they become better people, better parents, better citizens. They live happier, more fulfilled lives. But the choice is up to us. Paul puts it very clearly in the last verse of the chapter. He says, the wages of sin is death. If you continue in sin, that's what you're going to get. That's how you're going to get paid. But the gift of God, the gift, we don't do anything to earn it. It's simply a gift. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The choice couldn't be any plainer than that. Death on one hand, eternal life on the other. Martin Luther wrote a treatise in 1523. It's titled On the Freedom of the Christian. And in the treatise, this is what he says. I am perfectly free, subject to no one. At the same time, I am a slave subject to everyone. And so it is for us. We are free to choose. Either we can choose to serve sin or we can choose to follow God. The truth is we are all sinners, even the very best of us, even the person standing in this pulpit. But the good news for us is that we have, <coughs> we have freedom to choose. We no longer need to be enslaved to our old selfish wants and desires, then now we can be slaves of Jesus Christ <clears throat> to serve and follow him. Could there ever be anything more American than that? We are free to choose what's bad or what is good. And so Bob Dylan's song is still valid for us. Everybody's got to serve somebody. Who will you serve? Let us pray. <coughs>
Oh Lord, we are so grateful for the freedom and the hope that Christ offers us. That no longer do we have to serve sin, but Lord, we can now serve and follow you. Lord, we know that we are all sinners. We know that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we know what the wages of sin leads to. It leads to death. And so, Lord, we pray that you would forgive us where we have fallen short. And instead, Lord, renew us and refresh us that we might look to you for help and hope and strength. Help us to choose to follow Jesus and to set aside our own desires and to follow him each and every day. It's those thousands of little decisions instead of the one big decision that help us to follow him. And so, Lord, we pray that you would help us to follow Jesus and become more and more like him. Lord, most of all, we are grateful for your son, Jesus Christ, and the freedom that he offers to us through his life, death, and resurrection. And it is all these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. It has been good to see you in God's house today. I do want to remind you as we dismiss that we'd like to invite you to go out the church street door on that side and um, we'll try to go from the back to the front and uh, so that we you're welcome to wave and to um, to do an air high five or however you want to. We'd like to encourage you to refrain from physical contact, especially as the number of virus cases continues to increase in Louisiana. And so let us close in prayer and then you'll be dismissed. Oh Lord, it is so good to be in your house, to see friends and family, to gather together to worship you. And so Lord, as we go into our week, we pray that you would help us to choose to serve and follow Jesus and that others would see him through the things that we do and say. And so Lord, as we depart, we ask that you would go with us and that others would know Jesus through our witness. And it is all these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you. You are dismissed.